Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, beautiful people. I hope you all are having a absolutely amazing day. As usual, I sure am. Getting all the things done. Got my exercise in. Now I'm ready for some magic. I think we're going to just, well, we're actually going to kick it off with a sealed MTG sealed though yeah 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 to quote dodger <laughs> all right uh let's go ahead and do the things let's uh do some sealed neon dynasty here see what we open the moment of truth Show me the money. Show me the money. Well, let's see what these things do. We got Aganjo, Seed of the Empire. Can discard to deal four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. We know what this does when a uh, Samurai or Warrior attacks alone. <laughs> Untap it. And if it's the first combat phase of the turn, you get an additional combat phase. That's pretty sweet. Uh, Weaver of Harmony. This thing seems excellent. Just a two drop. Buffs a bunch of your other creatures. And it copies abilities. This thing's been good for us uh, in the seal that we had it. So, happy to have this. Satsuki. This thing doesn't seem great, but... Putting, putting a lore counter, counter on a saga seems like it can be good, especially since we have this rare saga. We'll see what that does in a second. Also, you can return sagas to your hand. Uh, from your graveyard to your hand. That seems pretty good. Um, this guy, he seems fine. Nothing special, though. And drag the dragon cam Kami born. You gain two life. Look at the top three cards of your library. Exile one of them da face down with a hatching counter on it. Then put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Okay. So it does nothing that we know of yet on the first two turns. Turn three. Exile this. Return to the battlefield. It becomes a zero one. Okay, a zero one, sure. Whenever Dragon Kami's egg or a dragon you control dies, you may cast a creature spell from among cards you own in exile with hatching counters on them without paying its mana cost. Ooh, that doesn't seem great. What are we doing with this? <laughs> Uh, I don't know what to think about this thing. I don't think it's very good. I don't think it's good at all, actually. <laughs> it's like two turns you gain two life, and then the third turn you make a creature that when it dies you can play a creature, assuming you got a creature from those. Not my thing. All right. That said, let's see what we got here. So we got in white. I'll go ahead and get rid of all these lands. Okay. Ancestral Katana is playable. We're just putting all playables down here. This thing I think can be fine. This thing I think is really good. Uh, the build the your own Bane Slayer model, as MJ likes to call it, which <laughs> I, I think this is a pretty good target for that. You just make it really big and it lifelinks things and you gain life. Pretty good. These are all play. Ooh, we got an arrest. Arrest is very nice. Friending the mods is fine. White Shrine is... I really have been... I think this might be the best shrine, in my opinion. Okay, Repel the Vial, pretty good. 
Sunblade Samurai, also pretty good. Our white, there's not a ton of it, but it's all good. Doesn't synergize super well though. All right, this arm guard familiar. I'm much higher on this than I thought I would be. This thing does work. Does a lot of work. <laughs> um, essence capture. Counter target creature spell. Put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature you control. Seems fine-ish. Ooh, we've got a blue shrine. I like the blue shrine a lot too. Not for its shrine ability, but just for being an 0-4 flyer uh, that they want to kill pretty readily. Mnemonic Sphere has not been very good for me so far. I've played it in a couple of events and it seems a little bit too slow, even though this is a fairly slow... Let me adjust this just a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. Even though this is a relatively slow format, I feel like this is just a little too slow for this slow format. <laughs> that said, I might still play it some because of the artifact synergy. That does go a long way in this set. Short Circuit, this has never made my deck yet, and yet it still seems all right. It seems playable. So we'll put it in with the playables for right now. Um, Modern Age, again, this is another card that I thought would be really good. Hasn't seemed really good. Seemed okay. Seemed fine. Uh, Guardians of Aboro. They just, they pulled down the ground, which is fine. Suit up. Yeah, we've got a lot of, ooh, we've got the Tamios Completion. <clears throat> I haven't had an opportunity to play this card yet. But it's been really good against me, so, you know, seems that it could be good. This card is insane. <laughs> the whole thing unspeakable is nuts. Uh, I think this, just as a, just as a 3-4 flyer for 5 is good. Um, and it also has a non-useless ability. This is another one that I just... I don't understand, but it doesn't seem good to me. Ooh, we've got two Life of Tashiro Umazawa. Oh man, I like this card a ton. I think this card is exceptional. And we've got a Vile Beetle, or a Virus Beetle. <laughs> Chain Flail Centipede. Mm, we'll put it in, but I, I don't even know how playable that card is. Nizumi Blade Blesser. Undercity Scrounger. Another shrine. <laughs> are we going <laughs> are we going shrines deck in uh in sealed? Is that a thing? The ambushers. Ooh, twisted embrace is our black removal. Ooh. I really want to play these Life of Tashiro Umazawas, but our black is not looking great. All right, Kindled Fury, I think this is actually playable. If we get into an aggressive deck, it does some stuff. Simeon Sling, Crackling Emergence. I haven't seen this card be played. I haven't seen this card be good. It seems okay. Seismic Wave also seems okay. Mm, I'm really not very high on this Unstoppable Ogre, but I think it's barely playable. I think this is not playable. <laughs> Scrap here at Steelbreaker, again, barely playable. <laughs> all right, so let's go to our green. Let's hope there's some good stuff in green because all our other colors look pretty meh. Generous Visitor and Fang Shing Jackie is a double Fang Shing Jackie. That's a good start. Coiling Stalker is a good start. Really? Really? We've got a fourth shrine, huh? Weaver of Harmony. Heir of the Ancient Fang. I don't think this is that good, but I think it can hang out in the deck. I don't think this is that good either. I don't even know if this is playable, but it'll hang out in the deck also. 
I do like Season of Renewal. I'm not sure this is playable. I'm not sure this is even playable at all. Like, what am I going to do with this? I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. <laughs> Favor of Jukai. I think it's fine. Jukai Preserver is pretty dang good. Tales of Master Seshiro. This is very good. And the Tanuki. Tanuki is quite good as well. So we've got... Let's see what mana fixing we have. Okay, we've got an Uncharted Haven. That's nice. Only cast a pilot or... Yeah, we don't want that. Huh. So... I don't think we want either of these. Do you think says well? <laughs> Satsuki. As of right now, if we're going white green, we don't have much in the way of. I guess it's still a one three for two. I don't know about Satsuki. Hmm. Give me one second here. All right, had to apologize. I made a joke this morning that was in poor taste, apparently. So I had to do that. All right, anyway, back to looking at cards. Mm. This thing is interesting. I don't think it's ain't good, but it's interesting. None of these artifacts actually seem all that good. The Patchwork Art Automaton is good if you're in an artifact deck. All right, so what do we have here? I'm gonna do things a little bit differently than normal right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, which of these cards are like very good reasons, reasons to play the color. We're going to move them over here.
I do think Repel the Vial is excellent in this set. I think Repel the Vial is... kind of a necessity, honestly. <laughs> Having instant speed removal goes a long way. All right, so those are my white cards. For blue, it's like this and Tamiyo's completion. Everything else is fine, but not exciting. So black. We've got Life of Toshiro. We've got Virus Beetle. We've got Goshentai of Hidden Cruelty. And that's about it. Red. Red, we don't really have anything. I think we can just nix red altogether. Okay, so. We certainly want to be green. Green is our deepest color by far. We're just, we're always playing green here. And really none of our other colors are deep enough. To play them except for white, it seems like. White has, well, are we just going mono green, splash a couple of shrines? <laughs> Bring this over here. So none of this is really very good. And it sucks, <laughs> it sucks that our dual land, our white red dual land is in the colors, or it splashes a color that we don't actually need. Hmm. Man, this is not a very good looking pool. <laughs> not a very good looking uh we don't have any mana fixing either, so we can't really splash. I'd like to splash this. I'd like to splash this, but we can't. Honestly, I'd like to splash this. Life of Toshiro Umazawa has been absurd. Maybe we can still splash the the black shrine. We really shouldn't. We're we've been doing too much splashing lately. We're not gonna. We won't. We won't go that deep. We'll go. Do we even want this Uncharted Haven here? I don't think we do. Yeah, I think we just want to go like that for our mana base. All right, so next question is, this Katana is probably going. Kitsuna Ace, we've got other good two drops. It just isn't doing enough here, I don't think. Man, we don't have a uh, we don't have a spinning wheel kick to make our fangshing jackies really good. Oof, this pool. Like this guy. We want that. And how are we ever winning games here? So a modified creature. And this Imperial Subduer. We don't have any Samurais for it. We have this Moth Rider Patrol, <laughs> I guess, is a thing. Um, mm.
All right. Anyway. Um, hmm. Like none of this fits together very well. Our white isn't even really doing anything here. Well, it is doing some stuff. This is actually white mana fixing. I wonder... What if we wanted to go... Like this? Hmm. <laughs> okay, this doesn't actually look any better, does it? I guess Satsuki would probably come out in this build. Alright, so scratch that plan. What about this? <laughs> so these historian wisdom, I don't normally like them, but they do go well on this golden tail disciple. Not having any way to utilize the death touch on this thing, Shinjeki is rough. I think we're going to run it like this. <laughs> it's not great. 
It's definitely not great. <laughs> it's actually very bad, <laughs> but it does do the thing. It does do the things, the things, the things, the things. Let me um, go ahead and. I guess you can't pop out the chat here. Nice, that works though. Okay, this hand is actually quite good. Turn one Moth Rider Patrol is actually exactly what we want. Uh, <laughs> our, our, our big plan here is just to make big Moth Rider Patrols a lot of times. <laughs> so hopefully we can draw our, like one drop that gives things counters. And our other plan is to go wide with this shrine. Next turn, we can go Jukai Trainee. And this is actually a nice card because it can attack into a lot of stuff that most two drops can't. Ooh, they have Mirage Lands. Oh, I want Mirage Lands. I always used to play with Mirage Lands in the real life tournaments because Mirage Lands are awesome. Oh no. Okay, well this is obviously just very, very bad. This thing is insane. Okay, well. Uh oh. Our game is crashing, it appears. Let's reopen it. <laughs> so this Kami of Transcendence that thing is so good. It just, it gets really big, really fast, and then it returns from the graveyard. It's nuts. I think we should be fine to make it back into our game uh, with plenty of time to spare on our turn. I hope, I think, I hope, I wonder. That Oko? Have there been any other Okos since the one? All right, so to damage. Guess we'll just play a Jukai trainee still. We don't have any, well, we have our arrest. We have like one removal spell. We can also uh, repel the vial on this if it gets to be above a 4-4, which it almost certainly will pretty quickly. So we do have ways to deal with this in our deck. It's not the end of the world, but it definitely, oh, that also. This causes other problems. So now our Moth Rider can't get through. We did draw land. That's an important piece of the puzzle here. We're gonna need that fifth land for all the things we wanna do. We'll just play a Fang of Shinjeki. Not gonna attack. So our, our opponent. is pretty far ahead right now. Oh man, very far ahead right now. Wonder if they're just gonna start milling us. That can't be their game plan, right?
They are going to start milling us. Okay. They got a planes. That's... It's good for us. So... We can play our shrine. I think we do, even though we can't activate it this turn. They're in green, white, blue, so they have more removal in this set than in most sets, but they don't have a super easy time just getting rid of it right away. They are going to keep milling us. Got another planes. Okay. Well. Hmm. So we can generous visitor plus golden tail disciple. And that gives us a counter. But then we don't get to activate our shrine this turn. And where do we put the counter? Do we put it on Moth Rider Patrol? Jukai Trainee? Just start buffing our worst creature? I think we put it on Moth Rider Patrol. Ugh. I really want to activate this shrine. I'm actually just going to play this. We're going to go ahead and play a super slow game. I don't think we need to rush here. Our opponent doesn't seem to be doing a ton. They are milling us for one each turn, but that gives us a lot. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> okay. That is very scary. Mm. This camp, Kami of Transcendence is getting big too. Are they going to start attacking with it soon? Well, we still have our Fang of Shinjeki. If they attack with it, we can death touch it. And we are, are, we're healthy enough that our life total doesn't really matter. It does come back from the graveyard every turn, but it comes back as a 2-2. Two -two. And they've put a lot into making it a 5-5, five -five, so they probably don't want to just trade it off willy-nilly. <laughs> That's my feeling anyway. This Moth Rider Patrol can be very good coming up here. But right now... It's not doing anything, but I think that uh, this four mana tap ability is going to be really valuable soon. We want our fifth land, but I don't want to channel this Sunblade Samurai for it. Actually, we want six lands because we want to be able to channel this or play these and... also trigger our shrine. I don't know what our plan is for winning this game. I think it's just going to be draw our other shrine and go really, 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 really wide <laughs> and find a way to kill them in one turn with just like a million little creatures. All right. They don't have mana for that, fortunately. Hmm. Well, this is very bad right now. Because it doesn't draw a card. Uh, so I'm getting Golden Tail Disciple here. The question is, what am I putting the plus one plus one counter on? And I think the answer is...
Chukai trainee? No attacks. Make another spirit. <laughs> I do not know. White, white green against white green leads to some very weird stalemate type of situations. So now they can put this eater of virtue on something. So it's just going to beat us down for two every turn. <laughs> and mill us for one every turn. So they do have multiple angles to win this game. Hmm. Okay, well. So... If Enchanted Permanent is a creature with the greatest power, so if it's tied for greatest power, does that count? If I put this on my Jukai trainee... Does that count? We'll just play this out for right now. This thing is going to beat us down for two for a few more turns. <laughs> it's crazy that both of us are stuck on four lands. Oh, they finally got to five lands. This has been a weird game overall. Well, if we ever get to cast this, we can trigger it twice. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, well, that's gonna make things much more difficult for us. So there's a fifth land. I guess that we can go land. What are we putting the counters from this on, though? I guess we go land Tales of Master Sashiro. Put the counter on Moth Rider Patrol. Put this counter on Moth Rider Patrol. Activate your ability. Put this counter on Moth Rider Patrol. And then just go no attacks. Now we can block the Goshen tie. I don't even know if we do it now though. No blocks. I mean, they definitely have a combat trick, right? Or the other thing is this Eater of Virtue, if the Goshen Tide dies, it just gives something else flying and they get to give their Kami of <laughs> Transcendence flying. Okay, so we get our 5-5 five, five haste. Dorian's Wisdom on Moth Rider Patrol. Put the counter on Moth Rider Patrol. Okay. That's a start. So 
So we can't Iganjo this turn. But we can use Iganjo to kill like the Skyblast Samurai at some point. <laughs> Hmm. We're going to take this four again. So we're taking a lot of damage. That is interesting. So that's really good, but so if I don't create a token there, it, <laughs> it tips them off that we have something. And my plan here is to Moth Rider Patrol blocking Sky Blessed Samurai. And then assuming they have a trick of some sort. Yeah, so we can go use this on that. Oh, we have two legendary creatures? Oh, wow. Okay. So I didn't realize we had two legendary creatures. <laughs> what is... Oh, the shrines. Oh, man. Sorry, Ganja was super cheap. So we could have actually played this last turn without tipping them off. All right. So we mill us for one again. Okay, so now we'll play this shrine. Put its counter, put the counter from it on. Shiro's living legacy. Okay, we'll pay the one there. Put your counters on yourself. I mean, we've we wasted a lot of life taking damage from that thing. Oh man. That is a that is definitely a sky turtle. Alright. Hmm. Now we have to play our Sunblade Samurai, which means we don't get to trigger shrines this turn. Which is a bit of a waste, bit of a sad time. So if Sky Turtle and Goshintai attack, we have to block the Sky Turtle. We don't have any other reach creatures.
What to do, what to do, what to do. <laughs> How many creatures do they have? They have three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. Still can't really kill them. So we can't tap down the sky turtle with moth rider patrol so i am just going to activate both our shrines here <laughs> and the plan is going to be to season of renewal at the end of their turn getting back well actually probably assuming that they do attack with the sky turtle but they'll probably put their weapon on the sky turtle and attack with it and assuming they do that, I'll get back Moth Rider Patrol plus the Jukai Preserver. And then we'll play Jukai Preserver. Oh, but then they can, oh man. Yeah, I think I think we're just super dead here if they figure out that they can, <laughs> that they can put their weapon on the Sky Turtle. Because if they weapon up the Sky Turtle and attack with it, then they can put the weapon on the Kami of Transcendence the next turn and it gets flying. So we have to draw our removal and it will get Ward as well. So we have to draw like our Arrest specifically. Oh man. Maybe they'll just, you know, time out. Seems like they're back now. Darn it. <laughs> Our plan of them losing by timing out. Foiled. Maybe they're not. Maybe we just have to wait a long time. Even if they even if they walked away from the computer and they time out, we still can't really kill them in any way. <laughs> How funny is that? So actually, if we Season Renewal and get back the Jukai Preserver and the Fang of Shinjeki, at the end of their turn, we can put the counters on the Moth Rider Patrol and then it's big enough to survive the Sky Turtle attack. So if they don't come back soon... Whoa! Oh man, I think we were super dead that game. <laughs> I think I think if they were not, if they didn't go AFK or whatever, uh, I think we were super dead. But hey, I will take a win. Our deck is incredibly mediocre. <laughs> so uh, I'm happy for it. All right, if we get one more win, two more wins out of this deck, my mind will be blown. Yeah, if we get to three wins, I'll be very, very, very happy. Honestly, I'm very, very happy with getting one win out of this deck. I think this is a zero win deck. That said, it it's not, even as a zero win deck, even as a very underpowered deck, it still has a lot going for it. So if our opponents get stuck on mana, 
um, and that sort of thing, we still can do a lot. Uh, the, the thing is, it's just against opponents who are getting equal luck to us. I think we lose basically every game. So we have to outluck our opponents in order to win. Which is a thing that happens in the magics. This hand, well, if we get to draw a card with this on turn three, like if we go land, if we draw a planes next turn, play Satsuki, um, turn three, play the planes, Historian's Wisdom, and get to draw a card off it. All right, so we need to draw land next turn. That's step one in our plan. <laughs> If we draw land next turn and they play something okay it's less than three power that's not a land though okay so we need to draw land that's step one <laughs> if we draw land again we can play this get some value if we get the card we can draw toward a fourth land and then once we get a fourth land we can play a befriending the moths we can use Setsuki to get a counter off it so we get our Moth a turn early. Huh. I think we just take the damage here. I guess I should have been more scared of ninjutsu there. They can ninjutsu, they're blue-black. They, they could have ninjutsu this in if they wanted. Okay, huh. So now we can historian's wisdom on our Satsuki. Hopefully draw a land. It appears they don't have any cheap ninjutsu that they want to use, otherwise they would have used it last turn. So we don't really have to worry about that. That said, they must have some sort of combat trick. And these are some sweet lands too. Look at how cool those are. I like your lands, friend. If we draw land next turn, though, we can play Befriending the Moths. Maybe we don't even want a Satsuki at next turn? Oh, no. That's scary. That is really scary. Fortunately, they can't... They don't have a red mana yet. But that is, that is terrifying right now. Hmm. What do we want to do here? Befriending the moths. even with <laughs> the counter stuff, doesn't really do that much. I think we just want a Jukai Preserver. The question is where to put its counter. <clears throat> and I think that making this a 4-5 is the choice there. That way we can block all three of their creatures if they attack and that kind of stifles their ninjutsu options. They also probably don't want to attack with Hitasugu unless it wins combat. Okay. So now we can go play a planes. Play the Tales of Tale of Master Seshiro.
If they counter this, it's not that bad. Put its counter on... Moth Rider Patrol? And then attack for two. We're not gonna use Satsuki's abilities this turn because we just need Satsuki as a blocker. Uh, but next turn, what we can do is we can use Satsuki's ability, remove a, or put a counter on this, flip it next turn, and then we get the five five vigilance haste. All right, so they're just scrying too. I guess they're probably looking for a red mana. If they get a red mana, this thing gets completely out of control. Um, they put one on top. That's bad. <laughs> oh, that's real bad. If they found a red mana source. They may not just be purely digging to a red source, though. They may, there may be other stuff that they want. They may not have that many red sources to just go doom digging for it, to use an expression from uh, Storybook Brawl. The doom rolling for red mana. Okay. We really need to find one of our pieces of removal here. But Hidesugu is bad news. On our turn, I think we're gonna Satsuki. Look at how many cards they have in hand, too. Maybe we befriending the moths and then Satsuki adding counters to both of them, both of the lores. Then we can jump our Jukai Preserver. And that'll push through six, probably 11 damage. They don't have much mana left. Did they not draw a land in all those cards? Maybe they were banking on <laughs> banking on drawing a land for some reason. And now they're unsure what to do because they didn't. Oh no, they did. Oh, they were seeing if they wanted to hold on to that, I guess. Okay, so we'll give our Jukai Preserver that. We'll play our Befriending the Moths. Give Jukai Preserver plus one plus one and flying. Activate this thing's ability. I wonder what order, I guess we could have chosen the order for that. And it probably, we what we would have wanted to do if we had not had auto choose order or auto ordering, we would have wanted Befriending the Moths to come second so that we could jump the 5-5 five five that we get from this. Wonder if putting on full control allows you to choose your the way your things get stacked. All right, so we're gonna attack with everything. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Having our abilities get auto stacked for us cost us a creature there, <laughs> and a good creature <laughs> at that. So that sucks. Uh, that's just, that's one of those things on Magic Arena. I guess I can turn it off, but then you have to order them. Yeah, we'll, we'll turn off auto order triggered abilities. That's a bummer though. That is a big hit. All right, soul transfer. All 
right? That's bad. We do get a moth next turn. So here we can attack with this guy. And then we can play this Heir of the Ancient Fang. It does get a plus one, plus one counter because we have a modified creature. And then at the end of their turn, we can Season of Renewal. Getting back Tales of Master Seshiro and Moth Rider Patrol, I guess. Or maybe they kill something of ours here. All right, they got a swamp. That's a good thing for us, because... Well, we didn't want them to get anything. <laughs> they don't, we don't want them to kill our stuff. So now... They have five mana to do stuff. Too bad we can't get back this as the creature half of Season of Renewal. Although, I think we'd probably still get back Moth Rider. Just to cast two spells in one turn. I wonder what they're thinking about here. Three, four flyer. Okay. We'll go Season of Renewal, get back both, Moth Rider Patrol, actually, maybe Historian's Wisdom? No. No. Well. Hmm. Actually, yeah, we're going to get back Historian's Wisdom here. We're going to put it on Imperial Moth. Draw a card. Attack with everything. Got a lot of cards in hand. <laughs> uh, we might. The the thing is, if they want to hit a Sugu, that costs them three mana, and it taps down one of their creatures. They've got a ton of value, but hopefully they just don't have anything that is immediate enough to, to stop us from killing them. They can always chump our Imperial Moth. Well, actually we can Moth Rider Patrol tapping down their Replication Specialist. And they've got a lot of mana though. They got a lot of stuff going for them. <laughs> But they only have three life. 
That's a 2-4. Okay, they copy it. They still need to deal with our moth. All right, well, we're just going to go for the win here. I guess they can hit a Sugu, see if they hit some sort of five mana card. Maybe they just have some sort of removal. Fingers crossed they just have nothing, please. <laughs> please have nothing. Seems like they have something. Ah, return it to its owner's hand. That is something. Ouch. Okay. Well. Our lives just got very difficult. <laughs> On the bright side, next turn we can befriending the moths and jump a creature and if we well if they tap out here and they don't play two flying things we will sunblade samurai getting a planes so that we can tap down their replication specialist and jump a creature if they don't tap out here We'll have to consider. Man, this Otawara. Okay, what do they get? Oh man. Five mana spell. That's rough. And it's a five mana spell that blanks our board. That is very rough. Oh my gosh, that's so rough. I think we're still going to get a planes with this. Cast befriending the moths. Give this thing plus one plus one and flying. Tap you down. Hit you for two, hopefully. And then just fingers crossed that next turn, or that <laughs> in their drawing of draw, or scry two, draw two, that they don't find anything that stops us from killing them next turn, which is pretty unlikely. Now, on the other hand, okay, they topped one, so. That's very bad. We could have been playing this game much more value oriented, oriented played the Go Shintai. Oh, man. Oh, man.
Hmm. And this becomes a flying trample with <laughs> XX with the X as many cards as they have in hand. Yeah, think we're losing this one. I think we're losing this one. I'm not actually disappointed with the way I decided to play this. They had so much value that any sort of long game, yeah, we definitely lose this one. That's for sure. But yeah, they had, they had so much value that letting the game go on longer even if we're making a 1-1 one, one every turn and they're at 4 life and we just need to kill them I don't think there's a lot of value in that we're not completely dead yet if they counter this though <laughs> we are Wait, are we four, seven, nine, eleven? We're not quite. But they'll have a six six flying trample next turn. <laughs> Alright. Alright, we can call it there. GG. Just couldn't quite push through that last little bit of damage. There was definitely a lot of options we had in that game. I don't remember any specific spots that we could have played differently, but I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that we could have played that in a way that we would get two more damage there. Uh, I think I played a little bit reserved early on in the game. Either way. That's what happens sometimes. Sometimes your opponent is playing a super value deck and you are playing a barely playable deck. <laughs> and their deck was sweet, by the way. Uh, we got very lucky to even, <laughs> to even come close to winning that game. I think we should be happy, should be counting our blessings to have gotten them down to two life. <laughs> All right, not a great hand. So we're probably gonna turn three, use our Sunblade Samurai, I guess. Turn two Weaver of Harmony. Turn to Weaver of Army, turn three, Sunblade Samurai. Or Coiling Stalker. Hmm. I think we're just going to... Sunblade Samurai get a planes. They get a 2-2 two -two Menace. Ooh. That's really scary. Oh man, that is very, very scary. So what do we do now? Do we arrest this just right away? This is our first game we've drawn any of our removal. So there's a plus side. <laughs> we can just play this, take four from that. I 
guess we'll go this route. Man, that thing is going to be bonkers <laughs> in this situation. That's what I will say. One of my favorite words. Oh, and now it because Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and now it taps this puzzle maker and they get to scry. Well, fortunately, they went top. Well, unfortunately, they went top. We would rather they not go top. But now they just get to scry again. The value is absurd. Okay, we'll attack with our Golden Tail Disciple. And this turn, we will arrest this thing. I hate to use an arrest on a vehicle. <laughs> really hate to use an arrest on a vehicle. Uh, that said, that's a pretty insane vehicle. Take two. We drew a land. Attack with the Golden Tail Disciple. Hmm. Kind of wanted to ninjutsu the Coiling Stalker in there and then double its ability so that we get it before this Jukai Preserver comes in. I think now... Okay, I just want to know... Does channel count as a activated or triggered ability? I just want to find out. <laughs> I'm thinking not. I can't duplicate this Tanuki, right? I just have to find out. I have to know whether this works. Yeah, we're going to take a bunch here. That's the vehicle that crews another vehicle. Wait, really? Wait, we can copy this? No way! Really? Really now? You can copy channeled abilities with that? That is sweet. Well, I'm glad we tried that. I didn't think that was actually gonna work. Okay. I don't know if it gets us back in this game, but that was cool, nonetheless. Okay, so now we can go Jukai Preserver. Oh man, no, 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 no. I can't, I can't tap properly. I can't untap and tap properly. Rawr. Rawr. Boo. Auto tapper gets me again. <laughs> Building our own Bane Slayer, though. 
building our own Bane Slayer. What does it cost to create this? Three? Yeah. And it's not that big of a deal, but being able to play the Coiling Stalker there would have been very nice. <laughs> That's what I'll say about that. Man. The Magic Arena interface, it wrecks me on a daily basis. <laughs> okay, see so they get a draw card. Okay. So we can go befriending the moths, jump both our creatures. What? I have full control held. I have full control held. I have, I have full control held. Why? Oh, okay. Now I get to respond to it. Oh, thank goodness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this, uh, this UI is going to make me lose, pop a blood vessel. <laughs> Just... <laughs> trying to get it to do what I want. That said, I still think we're in pretty bad situation this game. But, uh... We've got potential. Uh, I think we'll play Satsuki out. The next turn, we can again jump two creatures. We've also got this Season of Renewal. All right, that is a large Crew six, crew 3 creature, 6-6 six, six for Crew 3. Okay, we will use that on here, commit, duplicate it, put this one on the golden tail disciple. Go attack with both. They can they can crew and double block something if they want. They decide not to. Activate your ability. Play a Coiling Stalker. 
what we want to do now <laughs> is actually want to trade off this moth. Uh, we want to trade off this moth. And get back, get it back with Season of Renewal. That would be ideal if they attack with, say, the Patrick Automaton. <laughs> Just put our moth in front of that. Oh, wow. That thing's scary, too. Hmm. Trying to get this moth to die is going to be difficult. And they get to scry one every turn. Okay. Shinjeki doesn't really do what we want. I'm going to hold the thing of Shinjeki because if we draw our one mana dude that lets you put a plus one plus one counter on something when you play an enchantment, we can make our moth one bigger and then it can start attacking again. <laughs> I'm glad they decided not to attack with their futurist operative last turn because they could be hitting us for three every turn from here. Too bad this thing isn't an enchantment. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> that time they crewed the 6-6 six six just for the extra value. I respect that. Okay. Through the mobilizer mech. Attack with it? Really? Ah, uh, it has menace, so they want to ninjutsu that in. 
Okay, so they now they get to draw a card. And they get to replay the mobilizer mech. Get the values. Okay. I respect your your desire to get value over there. Hmm. So we're going to play this on our moth without getting value. Just so that we can start attacking in with it. And... They go to one. Moth Rider Patrol is really good here, especially with them being at one. We are going to start by attacking with our Moth. I think now we kind of want to... Play our Fang of Shinjeki or Shigeki. All right, we'll play Moth Rider Patrol and Fang of Shigeki. And pass the turn. I wonder what they're digging for. That actually makes this worse for them. Because now we can repel the vial on it when they activate it. They have no cards in hand. So we will tap down this puzzle maker. We will repel the vial, exiling the Mobilizer Mac. And they're just going to repeatedly crew their dude just for the value. I can appreciate that. <laughs> GG. GG. We won. We were able to push through that last little bit of damage. <laughs> Persistence pays off in the end. What a good life it is. Oh my goodness. 
All right. I'm going to take a... Well, no, nah, we're not going to take a break after that. We're just going to keep going. Whew, that was an intense one, though. Oops. So does that give us two wins now? Are we at the two win mark? I'm very proud of our little deck getting two wins. <laughs> yeah, we got two wins. Okay, let's see if we can get three. See if we can get three. Our, our little deck is uh, chugging along here. It's it's chugging along. It may not have much gusto, but it's got the... Uh... It's got the determination. <laughs> I feel like for that game, for us to win that game, they had to make a ton of questionable plays and that happens in magic sometimes and i'm all right with it so thank goodness for us being awesome okay hello hello uh what do we start with we'll start with a forest we're gonna go forest coiling stalker Iganjo is sweet just because well for many reasons but it's sweet because A it comes into play untapped so you don't have to make a decision too early on it and B You can keep a three lander like this, and it, if you just draw two lands or multiple lands in a row, it becomes. How do we want to do this? Do we want to play Satsuki here? This thing as a 2-3 seems bad. At the same time. Yeah, maybe we should have played Satsuki there. Satsuki just... Well, it probably did the same thing that this does. Blocks this thing. So maybe, yeah, we should have played Sasuke there. Interesting. Uh, we're just going to take the two. They're in green, so they do have some ninjutsu, but not a ton. The ninjutsu they do have is really freaking scary, though. All right. That's a little bit brutal. So play a Jukai Preserver. Where do we put the tokens? Or where, yeah, where do we put the counter? I think having two three attack creatures is better right now. So against red green, red seems really aggressive in this set, man. This thing got them so much value. This card is great. And look at how sweet that art is. Oh no. This card is really good too. So they're gonna have a really big branch of Vasaju here pretty soon. And that art is sweet too. Uh, 
So we can befriend some moths and attack. Or we can just set Suki. Satsuki hold up by Ganjo. I actually think befriending the moths is better here. Put it on the Jukai Preserver. Attack for four. Aw, oh, what a good boy. They have a good card back. They have good card backs. I respect that. Uh, okay. Yikes. Fortunately, they don't have any modified creatures, but that could change at any moment. And this thing is a beating, isn't it? Fair shrine. And activate the shrine into turn. We only have one legendary creature in there, right? Oh, and that thing has reach too? Ick. All right, so we're gonna need to <laughs> find removal real soon here. They have a pretty scary board. This thing could at any moment make a 5-5 five, five freaking <laughs> Dragon Spirit creature token. Yikes. But we have a 2-4 moth, so you know. Apples, oranges. So if we play Satsuki, play Jukai Trainee, use our forest to activate our shrine at the end of the turn. We make a 1-1. One, one. We still hold up by Ganjo because we have two legendary creatures now. Oh man, that is big. Okay. <laughs> okay, sure. Huh. Where do we put the counter from this? So we put it on our moth. And then we will use Satsuki's ability to give our moth another counter. Oops, I didn't mean to not make a shrine token. Actually, I really wanted to hold it by Ganjo, just in case. Man, this thing being in reach is just absurd. <laughs> All right, so if we draw our um, exile, exile creature with power four greater card, repel the vial, I guess it's called. If we draw that, we can get rid of this and then we can probably win this game. Without that, 
eventually they're going to get a modified creature and every time they attack with a modified creature they just get to make a 5-5 five five dragon maybe even two 5-5 five five dragons pretty soon <laughs> one more land and they can make two 5-5 five five dragons oh goodness oh goodness Oh no, they got a way to modify creatures and they can do it every turn too. Well, that is a nightmare. Complete and total nightmare. Wow. Hmm. And those things both have trample. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> How are we dealing with this? Okay, we could just take 14. These are actually nonsense blocks. They're just going to kill our Jukai Preserver and deal seven to us and then kill our Shrine. I... <laughs> so I, I had a plan with this and then I audibled and then it turned into just pure, pure nonsense. My plan was to make them use their removal spell on one of our things that was blocking the Tanuki so that I could kill the walking skyscraper with that Ganjo. I think they're super confused by why I would block this way. Which makes sense to me. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think they're justifiably very confused by my blocks and they're trying to figure out what they should do about it. Well, that actually could have gone really well for us, except that the arena UI hates me. <laughs> uh, I tried to hold full control there, but full control doesn't stop during the damage step, even if you have it held, it seems like. Um, because what I, after they made that decision to block that way, I wanted to Igonjo 
after the damage was dealt, I go into the walking skyscraper. Uh, but the full control, I think you, I think you have to manually set the stop. It was just, um, just holding full control doesn't seem to make a stop during the damage step. So need to remember, set a stop in the damage step if I want to have those type of options in the future. That said, that actually went relatively well as far as uh, that could go. Problem is, now they just get to, you know, very casually make a 5 5 flyer every turn. Not sure how we possibly win this game. I don't think we can. <laughs> I don't think we have any recourse for them having a recurring because they can just swap this onto anything every turn and make a 5-5 flare. Pretty sure there's nothing we can do about that. Look at our little fish over here. He's so peaceful. He's all right with what's going on here. Yep, that is definitely a thing you can do. That's a five five. So we have to add Ganjo here. Well, we don't have to. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> we could just concede here and it would be fine. <laughs> uh, oof, this was a beating. Well. Is there anything that we can do with this? No. No, there's not. Good game opponent, good game. Man, Goro Goro, Disciple of Ryusei. That guy is a real card. Because when you're in white green, you just have no way to get rid of a card like that. So it just sits on the board until it can be useful, and then it wrecks you. All right, let's see if we can get one more win here. One more win will be, I think we've already outperformed what this deck should have been able to do. But we got there in kind of a, you know, <laughs> a weird way. So let's see if we can outperform to the max. Get one more win here. Make something out of nothing. Seems like our sealed pools have gotten progressively worse as the as we've <laughs> as the format has gone. This sealed pool. Oh man, we have no. No oomph behind our deck. We have no bombs that just like can do things for us. So we really have to rely on getting on the board early, dealing a bunch of damage, and then finding crazy ways to push through damage at the end of the game. Okay, this is an insane hand for us, honestly. Uh, how do we want to do this? I think we want to go turn one, Moth Rider Patrol. It slows us down a little bit doing things this way. But it gives us counters on the Moth Rider. Turn two. Attack with Moth Rider, play a generous visitor. Please don't go swamp uh, Umazawa thingy, okay? All right, so we can go land shrine. 
Put the counter from generous visitor on Moth Rider Patrol. No attacks. End of turn. Use our shrine ability, yes. Next turn. What does this do? Oh, wow. So, Remnant of the Rising Star flying. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X. When you do, put X plus one plus one counters on that creature. Holy cow. As long as you control five or more... Mo okay. All right. Well, yikes. All right, so we're going to go Fang of Shinjeki. Shigeki. Put the counter on Moth Rider Patrol. Use Historian's Wisdom on Moth Rider Patrol. Put the counter on Moth Rider Patrol as well. <laughs> Draw a card. And uh, I hope that this thing can just kill them before they can do stuff. So they've got something here. Probably a combat trick of some sort. So we can arrest this bamboo grove archer. We could also play our shrine and just put the counter on the moth rider patrol, making it one bigger. I I think we're going to arrest this, put the counter on Fang of Shigeki. they return the Moth Rider Patrol to our hand, we're really sad. I'm okay with trading the Fang of Shigeki for that thing because it just is... This, this thing isn't too scary until it gets plus five plus five for having <laughs> five modified creatures. So it's one less modified creature on the board for them. Interesting that they didn't use that pre-combat. Okay, so what do we want to do here? I think we go... Hmm. Yeah, we're going to go Heir of the Ancient Fang. No attacks. Activate that. We are just going to alpha strike here. Weird. Okay. We are just going to alpha strike here. We will go ahead and befriending the moths first. We'll 
put the plus one plus one counter on Moth Rider Patrol. We'll jump our shrine. Good game. Hey! Okay! We did it! We got three wins with this deck. Oh my gosh. The stars have aligned perfectly. Life is incredible. <laughs> I am uh, I am in shock that we managed to get three um, three wins out of this deck, especially against that deck. There we go. Well, let's see if we can get four from here. Getting four, five, six—they're very small incremental upgrades and payouts. That said, they would be really nice. Anything, uh, any extra value we can get out of a deck like this is incredible. But three wins, three wins with this deck is like life is life is phenomenal <laughs> right now uh getting this getting those uh extra 600 crystals makes this go from a pretty sad big loss to like we just skirted by with uh <laughs> you know minimal losses okay uh, this hand is not good at all this hand um Yeah, it's just not good at all. We need a planes so badly. We will trade Coiling Stalkers with them if given the opportunity. Will we? Yeah, we will. Having our Coiling Stalker on the battlefield in case we draw another forest. Oh, dang. Yeah, because if we draw another forest, then we could have, um... Huh. So we could put this on their creature and draw a card with it if we wanted. Doesn't seem great, but it is a thing. Um, so here, if we draw planes next turn, we can kind of get back into this game, even though they have this thing. Because we do have removal. They are just pulling lands out of their deck, though. So we do have this Repel the Vile. If we draw planes this turn, we can remove this. And maybe make something happen. So do we actually want to put this on their guy, take an extra two damage? I think we do because what all we want to do is just draw planes and gain two. We're dead if we don't draw planes next turn anyway. So getting two draws at it, that's not a planes. Uh, we get one more draw to planes though. And if we draw the planes, we can repel the vial on this. And then we have a pretty decent chance of coming back into this game. Okay, maybe not. Okay, definitely not. We didn't draw the planes anyway. <laughs> okay, <laughs> GG. Well, that was short and uh, and sweet. Oh, man. Sometimes you just don't draw your second color. All right. Well, that was a fun little sealed. I'm happy that we got our three wins. We kind of lucked out like crazy there. So I will happily take that. Let's go open our packs, see what we got. And then... We'll have to see what we're going to do next. Okay. Thousand Face Shadow. This is the one mana 1-1 one, one flyer with Ninjutsu 4. 
When it enters the battlefield from your hand, if it's attacking, create a token that's a copy of another target attacking creature. So if you ninjutsu this in, it duplicates a creature.